Hey everybody, this is Alice with at alicearling.com and um, this is the second session for my intro to mixed media class. So um, the last night we focused on how to prepare our surfaces. Um, so I got a little things a little bit out of order. <laughs> so um, in my notes, but I wanted to just quickly go over part of how I set up my um, studio table. I generally work flat like you're watching me um, do. The table that I have is, you know, mid-century modern um, relic that's great because it's nice and heavy and sturdy, um, but it does have a dark surface on the top. So when I wrap my polyethylene sheeting, um, you want at least three mil thickness for that, and it's just the painter's drop cloth that they sell in any hardware store. Um, it comes in a big roll of however um, wide. Um, it does come like about three foot width, which would be good if you plan on just using it for, for your table, um, assume because most tables are generally within that width. So, um, but anyway, I stretch mine out and I tape it underneath so it doesn't move around very much um, when I'm working, uh, which will come into play more when we're working with a brayer and that type of thing, which will be in another lesson. So, but because the surface of the table is dark, I just have a couple sheets of white tissue paper underneath the plastic to give me a nice white surface to mix my paints on. You can see that this, um, this is where I mix my paints, and um, when it builds up a thick layer, you may have seen that in one of the um, supply list demonstrations, um, you can peel off the paint. Um, and then you can use that as collage material. So um, there's very little waste, which is good because paints and stuff are kind of pricey. So, so I do that. I have a nice big water bucket with my brushes in it. I've got some paper towels, um, some tissue, my brushes, the paints that I'm going to be using, um, all of my materials kind of right there, right here to hand. Um, I do like it a lot better when I'm very organized. That doesn't always happen. So, um, but anyways, I'm checking my notes really quick. So, um, and I have a spray bottle with water that I fill and make sure that I have handy. Um, and I'm going to talk about that a little bit. So last night, um, we prepared our 140 pound watercolor paper with a layer of matte gel medium on it and it's now dried. You can see that it's curled a little bit, but that's fine. Um, it generally won't do a lot more than that. If it does, um, we can talk about that later. So, and then also on my board, and I don't know if you can see, but there's a little bug that got stuck in my gesso. So, just like I was explaining to you last night, you have to wait for the gesso to dry, but if you have any little critters, so you can just um, sand, the, lightly sand with, this is 220 grit, sandpaper so you can sand any excess texture or inclusions that arrived um, before you go so so there's still a little bit of sandpaper from last night in my thing as I said before usually I do that over a trash um, so that that way I'm not getting um, the sand the sand or the sawdust, sanding dust, whatever. So in my work. Um, so then I, as I showed you before, I'm using the Liquitex heavy body acrylics. Um, I really, I prefer the thicker paint to the, the golden liquids, um, but they're, a lot of artists are very pleased with the golden liquids. So I'm just gonna put out a small dollop of paint on my palette. Um, and again, if you're, you can buy the, the prepackaged self-sealing packets and or palettes and all that kind of stuff. So I get my brushes wet and then, um, I'll just start. This is the, um, Ra yep, transparent raw sienna. I wanted to make sure I didn't misspeak on the thing, on the name. So I'm just going to lightly put, um, a layer and I'm wanting to go all the way to the edges but I'm not necessarily wanting to completely cover my piece at this point. Um, if 
for some reason the paint and I um, gets too that the the edges are too pronounced and you don't want that then that's where your spray bottle comes in you can lightly mist and then you can go back over and soften up some of those edges so um, a lot of that kind of depends on how many layers of paint you're planning on putting over um, I generally do quite a few so probably at this stage um, those harsh lines aren't going to matter so I'm leaving some white space I've got some light areas and some darker areas um, with the the yellow so then I set this aside to dry and then same thing with the board I'm gonna use a little bit of blue this time so and I think you can if you're um, I usually do one color per layer but you can do more than one um, so doing much more than two tends to get a little bit muddy so I'm gonna rinse my brush and I'm gonna pick up a little bit of the blue you'll see that I'm kind of forming a puddle of the paint um, can you see that so I'm gonna move this over hold on there we go so you can see it a little bit more um, this is just the water that was on the brush I didn't shake it off or, or anything so I formed a little puddle of more dilute paint beside you can still see that here is the paint straight from the tube so then I'm just gonna go again in a random manner I'm gonna rinse my brush and then I'm gonna do the same thing with the red so I'm kind of got a little puddle and I'm whoops yep I got a little too close to my blue there so we're gonna have more of a purple but that'll be all right so um and I'm just gonna go on top here so sometimes um it blends in a lot better so and again if you need to um, in fact I wanted to show you that so I'm gonna do it on purpose so if you get um, just a lot a lot of paint on there and it's too soupy um, then what you can do is make sure you keep your brushes in your water so you can take a paper towel um, and lightly pat it and you can kind of see that it um, removes some of the kind of all the way back down to the gesso which is kind of nice um, so this only does that when it's damp, not when it's completely dry. So, um, so anyways, that way you don't have a huge puddle of um, color or paint um, that you have to sit and watch dry. So if you're wanting to work fairly quickly, um, I generally work on quite a few pieces all at the same time. Um, so that, that way I don't get everything out and then in two seconds, because as you see, this, these layers, especially at this stage, do not take long at all. Um, you can't, but if you're only working on a few, so I have a drying rack that I stack them um, while they're drying. So usually by the time you know you get through 20 or 30 of them, then you're ready to go. Um, but if you're working on just a couple pieces or just one piece, then you can use a hair dryer and lightly dry um, the your board or your paper, whichever. So and you're wanting basically just basic dry to the touch should be fairly good at this stage so you'll kind of have to experiment um, especially if you're using different paints so this is one that I did for a demonstration on Sunday so it's a little bit bigger but I'll tuck it under there so you can see what I'm doing over here on my palette better um, so I already have two layers of paint and you can see that some of these areas are much darker and some are much lighter um, so but it's just kind of a big mess so at this point um, and essentially just play with the paint see what it does um, and especially if you're sitting there staring at a big white sheet of paper it can be very intimidating so show it who's boss and get some paint on there however which way it goes so now I'm gonna take the the third color Usually I do a layer of each color. Um, sometimes I use other colors as well, such as purple or turquoise. Um, so it just kind of depends on my mood, I guess. 
but uh, most of the time I stick with a fairly simple palette. Um, I'm just constantly fascinated with the way the, um, you know, yellow and blue make green, but when you have the different layers, you can see this isn't turning green, but yellow over blue looks different than blue over yellow, and it looks different when there's red underneath and that type of thing, so I'm always kind of fascinated to see what the what the paint's going to do. So I, I like to make sure I'm working all the way to all the edges. Um, a lot of times, I know for me, when I was getting started, I tended to work right in the middle, and you're wasting all of the space, so fill it all in. Um, the nice thing about working a little bit larger than perhaps you'd like and filling in all the areas is that if you have, you know, say this much of your painting at the end that's good, you can chop off that part and then you're left with still a nice size piece. So, so anyway, here's the first stage. Um, now this needs to dry completely. I'm just checking my notes again. Um, so, and I think I've got everything for this, this stage. Tomorrow night we'll talk about um, adding some gesso to the paint to make it opaque. These are all just the straight from the tube transparent colors. So, and if you have my supply list, you'll know that I'm using ultramarine blue, alizarin crimson, and raw sienna. So, and I, again, I like the heavy body acrylics um, for this. So... I think it gives me a little bit more control, but it's partly just what I started with, so it's entirely up to you. Um, and then I did want to let you know, if you haven't purchased your supplies, um, when I was at, I think it was Michael's, probably any of those types of stores would have the same thing. They had little bitty um, tubes in a set. There were, um, I'm trying to remember, about seven different colors, I think. There was a white, um, black, red, blue, and yellow, and I think maybe a green and a purple. Um, I don't remember exactly for sure. I tried to, to do a periscope to let you know, and um, it wouldn't connect. I guess I was in too big of a metal building or something. But anyway, it was a, a, a set of small tubes of all those different colors. I think it was about $10. Um, so that would be a great option for you to get started with. Um, you'll generally probably find that You'll use more of one color than another, and so then when you run out of that color, you can purchase an additional tube. Um, but if you discover that you don't really care for this technique, then you haven't, um, you're not out a lot of money. So, although there's a lot of other things that you can do with the paints too that I'll probably get into in other classes. Um, so, I think that's everything. So, I hope y'all are having a great night.